terrifying but true space incidents that happened. You've most likely thought about how one of the most fascinating things about space is how little we know about it. Despite there being numerous things that we have learned about the universe, it can still surprise, enthrall, and terrify us. Keep your eyes wide open and don't miss this amazing collection of terrifying but true space events that really happened. Number 4. The signal we received from space that might have actually been aliens. Back in August of 1977, an astronomer named Jerry Eman was checking out some of the computer readouts from a telescope designed to find and locate possible alien signals. Most of the time, this search would come up empty, but on this occasion, the rare event happened. He actually found something. Eman was volunteering with the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Team, or SETI, at Ohio State University and had been pointing the big Ear telescope at a star named Chi Sagittarii, when one of the readouts from the telescope suddenly produced a series of numbers and letters, reading 6EQUJ5. Eamon wrote a simple note on the printout saying, Wow! And ever since, the signal has been referred to as the Wow signal. Even now, this signal obtained back in the 70s is considered to be the best candidate for an extraterrestrial signal that we've ever seen. It was a burst of narrowband radio waves at a 1,420 MHz frequency. But the clearest indicator of alien life is the fact that natural sources of signals tend to be wideband. So the fact that this was narrowband, the type that is usually human-made, could actually prove the existence of life on other planets. Over the years, people have tried to explain this phenomenon, and in 2016, astronomer Antonio Paris of St. Petersburg College, Florida, attempted to account for the signal by looking at a couple of comets. 266P Christiansen and 335P Gibbs in the same area as the signal. Comets release a lot of hydrogen, and hydrogen emits energy at 1420 MHz. So that could be an explanation, though no conclusions have been reached. Number 3. Creepy Space Music from Beyond the Moon Yes, it sounds straight out of a B-movie title. But in 1969, three Apollo 10 astronauts were in orbit around the moon, just two miles above the surface in the lunar module and one in the command module above them. Suddenly, they heard something extremely strange. NASA was recording their communications and they preserved the conversation in their archives. Just listen to this conversation that went something like this. That music even sounds out of space, doesn't it? You hear that? That whistling sound? Said lunar module pilot Eugene Kernan said Mission Commander Thomas Stafford. Say, you're... Kernan began when interrupted. Did you hear that whistling sound too? Asked Command Module Pilot John Young. Yes, sounds like, uh, you know, uh, out of space type music, said Kernan. Later on, Kernan brought it up again. That uh, eerie music is what's bothering me. You know that? God damn, I heard it too, said Young. You know, that was funny, said Kernan. That's just like something from out of space. Really? Who's going to believe it? Said Young. Nobody. Should we tell them about it? I don't know. Replied Kernan. We ought to think about it some. It's possible to listen to the whole conversation yourself and read the transcript of the conversation in full if you're interested by just going to NASA's archive. Despite the fact that this encounter by the Apollo 10 team has made it into public knowledge, the three astronauts never actually spoke about what they heard in any public capacity after returning to Earth. In 2016, the eerie music was actually played in a show called NASA's Unexplained Files, though. So you can have a listen for yourself. What about an explanation, though? Well, this one is a little bit mundane, actually. As you know, Apollo 10 was the last mission to the moon before the famous lunar landing of Apollo 11, with Armstrong and Aldrin walking on the moon and Michael Collins in the module. And Collins attempted to explain this in his book Carrying the Fire. In the book, Collins suggests that it was a simple interference between the lunar and the command module's VHF radios, citing that it sounds like wind whipping around the trees. He also said that the Eleven team were warned of strange whistling sounds before landing on the moon, and that if they hadn't been, it might have scared the hell out of him. Number 2. Two cosmonauts survived two days of freezing in Siberia. Back in 1965, Cosmonaut Alexei Leonov was the first person ever to perform a complete spacewalk. And while this was a success, it was on his return to the ship that things started to go awry. He didn't tell the full story of what happened to him and his crewmate Pavel Belyayev for 40 years, but eventually revealed the full story in an extract of his book, Two Sides of the Moon. According to Leonov, when he returned to the vessel, he found his spacesuit had deformed through lack of atmospheric pressure 
and he was required to enter head first, rather than feet first. Another aspect of this was that he would have had to slowly release all of the oxygen from his suit to fit into the airlock. His temperature shot up, and he felt it rising from his feet to his arms, but he did complete the entry. Still, that was just the beginning. When the two came out of orbit and returned to Earth, they found that their guidance system wasn't working. They had to do it manually. This meant choosing a location sparsely populated, but within Soviet territory. They chose to head for an area west of the Ural Mountains. But as soon as Belyaev turned on the engines, they noticed something wrong. A cable was still connected to the landing module, where they were situated, and launched them off course. Eventually they were able to get free, but they landed 2,000 kilometers from their intended destination and in two feet of snow, with no shelter at all besides the landing capsule. This led to them having to survive for two nights in the frozen temperatures with nothing but a pistol to protect them from wildlife before they were eventually rescued. Number 1. Drowning in Space Two ways to die that most likely terrify even the most hardened of people are most likely suffocating in the vacuum of space and drowning. Both of these scenarios are absolutely horrifying for the poor people that have suffered anything even like them. But what if you had to deal with both of them at the same time? That's what happened to Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano, who was out on a routine spacewalk in July of 2013, when suddenly anything routine about it was dashed. Parmitano suddenly realized that there was water inside his helmet, and he figured that due to the immense effort involved in a spacewalk, it made sense that it could just be his sweat. However, eventually the sweat became too much for a human body to produce that quickly, and he thought perhaps it might have been from his drinking bag, but realized it wasn't as the leak began to increase. Brace yourself because his account of the event would send shivers down anyone's spine. In a blog post for the European Space Agency, Parmitano wrote, Two things happen. The sun sets, and my ability to see, already compromised by the water, completely vanishes, making my eyes useless. But worse than that, the water covers my nose, a really awful sensation that I make worse with my vain attempts to move the water by shaking my head. By now, the upper part of the helmet is full of water, and I can't even be sure that the next time I breathe, I will fill my lungs with air and not liquid. To make matters worse, I realize that I can't even understand which direction I should head in to get back to the airlock. I can't see more than a few centimeters in front of me, not even enough to make out the handles we use to move around the station. Now that is terrifying, especially as Parmitano couldn't communicate properly with anyone. For a long time, he was stuck isolated and alone, with the vacuum of space outside and a helmet slowly filling with water. Some folks in this situation would panic, and that would be what ended up killing them. But Parmitano was able to remain calm. The mission was aborted, and even in his lonely silence, he managed to make it back to the airlock. But it was a tense few minutes as he waited for the airlock to repressurize and get him to his crewmates, who rushed to help him out of the helmet. It was later explained that a blockage had caused the water leak and that the same problem had occurred with the suit before but had been misdiagnosed. So, those were some of the most terrifying and yet still true space stories. You can come out now, it's over. We made it. What do you think about these stories? What would you do in these people's positions?